Who is that? Oh, okay, I had the first question. Uh, uh -huh. Recently, Donald Trump uh, changed the embassy to Jerusalem, which means that it's now the capital of Israel. What's your reaction on that? What, uh, Bismillah rahman rahim What Donald Trump did was to activate or to enter into force yeah. a decision already taken by the United States Congress many years ago, many years ago, uh, to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Um, the previous presidents were simply postponing, postponing. Yeah. Uh, but Trump did what not, did none before him did. He said, we offer now official United States recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. If Israel were to succeed in getting more countries to do what the United States has done, it would then be able to override the resolutions of the Security Council of the United Nations and of the General Assembly and present the, the, present the world with what is known as a fit accompli. We, we, we are now in charge of Jerusalem and we have international recognition of Jerusalem as our capital. We now have legal legal jurisdiction over Jerusalem. Hmm? This is important for Israel because unless she achieves this, yeah. the claim to be the holy state of Israel is hollow. <laughs> you can't be the holy state of Israel and you do not have legal control over Jerusalem. Hmm? So this is part of the sta stage by stage process through which this Israel could eventually claim to be the holy Israel of Nabi Dawood alayhi salam and Nabi Suleiman alayhi salam. There are other things that Israel must do in order to claim to be holy Israel. For example, the Torah says that the uh, holy land extends from the river of Egypt, that is the river Nile, until the river Euphrates. So Israel will have to take control over all that territory, which is known as the Eastern Delta in Egypt. From the river Nile to the Red Sea is called the Eastern Delta. It is the most fertile part of Egypt. It is the part that produces all the food. Okay. Egypt, uh, Israel will have to take over this territory. Israel will also have to take the territory all the way until the river Euphrates. <coughs> For that, Israel will have to wage a big war. Oh, yes. Uh, if Israel is to claim to be the holy Israel of Nabi Dawood and Nabi Suleiman, Israel also has to rebuild what they call the temple, the temple of Solomon. But in the Quran, as that Allah does not refer to it as a temple. In the Quran, Allah speaks of um, Four. Churches, temples, synagogues, and masajid. But when Allah refers to this fate of Allah, He refers to it as Masjid. <laughs> masjid al Aqsa. Subhanallah. Asra bi abdihi min al Masjid al Harami ila al Masjid al Aqsa. I think this is perhaps the only place in the whole Quran that the name Masjid al Aqsa appears. Mm -hmm. if, if Israel is to claim to be the Holy Israel, of Nabi Dawood and Nabi Suleiman salam, Israel will have to be using what we call dinar and dirham as money. Gold coins and silver coins. Because that's what they were using in Jerusalem, in Holy Israel. And every Jew knows that the money we're now using is bogus 
it's fraudulent, it's haram, it's bogus, it's fraudulent, it's haram, and I've been saying that for 20 years now. <laughs> yes. And uh, sometimes I lose patience. You can't uh, be too angry with me. I sometimes lose patience. I sometimes become angry that I'm talking and talking and talking for 20 years now and they're not listening to me. And I'm seeing my people growing poorer and poorer and poorer and poorer. Bangladesh becoming so miserably poor, Pakistan becoming so miserably poor, Egypt becoming so miserably poor, Algeria becoming so miserably poor, Morocco becoming so miserably poor, Indonesia becoming so miserably poor, all of Africa becoming so miserably poor. Shall I continue? It's happening before my eyes. Yes, I'm seeing it. And I know what is the cause of it. And I'm shouting from the mountain top. Nobody won't listen to me. What can I do? Israel will have to restore gold and silver coins as money. And I pray to Allah, I don't want to see that day. Because the shame and the disgrace and the Ummah of Muhammad will be too much for me. So please, please, brother, please Allah, send the angel and take me away from this world. I don't want to see that day. When Israel will start using dinar and dirham, and we're still using the bogus Pakistani rupee. <laughs> yeah. um, so all of these things Israel has to do. And what Trump did, was one step towards that eventual uh, capacity to capacity to claim we are the holy state of Israel. Uh, if we were to uh, analyze the implications of what he has done for us, not for them, then I have offered only one so far. I will have to eventually deliver a lecture in which I will have to analyze it more comprehensively. comprehensively. What I have done is to point out that Jerusalem is the most important city in the world for a Christian, as a Christian. Jerusalem is the most important city in the world for a Jew, as a Jew. And for a Muslim, in Akhir Zaman, Jerusalem is the most important city in the world. As a Muslim, in Akhir Zaman. The most important city in the world for a Muslim is Jerusalem. What then should have been done? Answer. You should have done what Nabi Muhammad did when he went to Yatrib. No, no, now it's called Medina. He spent seven months negotiating an agreement where all the different tribes would live and share the city on the basis of mutual peace between them each other. It was called the Misak of Medina. It brought into being a plural model of a state. The unit of the state was not this individual, like in Pakistan and Britain and so on, where the individual is the unit of the state. And the individual goes and votes in election. But in Medina it was not the individual who was the unit of the state. The unit of the state was the tribe. The tribe. And uh, there was a multiplicity of tribes, some of them Jewish, some of them pagan Arabs, and some of them Muslim. And so he brought into being a plural model of a state in which they all shared the city. And that would have been a sensible and intelligent solution to the problem of Jerusalem, that Islam 
Judaism and Christianity would have shared Jerusalem in peace on the basis of political equality and religious equality, none claiming to be superior to the other, and mutual respect for each other. You cannot be attacking my religion and live together in the same home with me. <laughs> Uh, so a plural model of a city-state, a plural model of a city-state in which all three, the Muslims, the Christians and the Jews, would have shared Jerusalem peacefully. And I pointed out that while the Ottoman Empire did many things that was wrong, they did this right. They held Jerusalem for a few hundred years. And for a few hundred years on the Ottoman rule, the Jews, the Christians, and the, and the Muslims shared Jerusalem peacefully. This was the achievement of the Ottoman Empire. What the United States has now done is to deliver the city to one group, the Jews, and leave the Muslims out and leave the Christians out. What will be the implications? There are some Christians who object to what he did, object to Christianity being left out. As soon as Trump made this declaration, the head of the Egyptian Coptic Church cancelled an appointment with the Vice President of the United States, slapping him on his face. Yeah, that's how the Orthodox Christians feel about what Trump did. So there are some Christians who object to what Trump has did. And there are other Christians, I call them people who follow Santa Claus, and they support Trump. There are some Muslims who secretly are supporting Trump. So, but the overwhelming majority of Muslims around the world object to what he's done. Overwhelming majority. The governments, of course, are always playing both sides and sides. <coughs> so what Trump has done is to leave that world of that part of the world of Christianity out and that part of the world of Islam out in the cold. <coughs> what will be the implications answer the implication is that by what because of what you have done it is now more likely that there will be a reconciliation between orthodox christians and muslims and there will be friendship between us and eventually an alliance and jerusalem will bring us together that is my first analysis of the subject and of course the zionists are going to bite their fingers in frustration because this is something they don't want at all. They do not want the world of Islam and the world of Orthodox Christianity to ever come together in friendship and alliance. Kabini! <laughs> and now because of Trump, this is going to become more likely. This is my answer to you. Mm. Can I have a glass of water, please? Mm. <coughs> Thank you. Any more questions? Will Pakistan's existence and military and nuclear power survive? Will Pakistan survive? And will Pakistan's nuclear deterrent power survive? Will the military also? Uh, Uh, a man travelled all through the day and at the end of the day he raised his hands and he prayed to Allah, Lord, Lord, Lord. Allah said, how can I answer him? When in his stomach there is haram. 
How can I answer him? We pocket this harap. <laughs> How can I answer him? Pakistan has betrayed Allah and his messenger from day one. Not the people of Pakistan. The rulers of Pakistan. From day one they have betrayed Allah and his messenger. Okay? Uh, I'm going to say some things now which uh, may hurt the feelings of some Pakistanis. Um, but if what I say is the truth, it must be spoken without regard for consequences. Otherwise I should go and drive a taxi. <laughs> when the British were leaving India, when the writing was on the wall, the Muslims had risen up and they established what is known as the Khilafat movement. What was the Urdu for it? Khilafat movement. In Urdu? Movement I mean, uh, in... Harkat uh, Khilafat. Was anyone, do you anyone? Khilafat. Tahrik Khilafat, Ajit. Tahrik Khilafat. It was led by men like Maulana Muhammad Ali Jawhar, his brother, his elder brother Maulana Shafat Ali, Shu'aib Qurayshi, Mufti Kifayatullah, Sayyid Suleiman Nadwi, and so on. And these were men in whom the Indian Muslims had confidence, particularly Sayyid Suleiman Nadwi. They had confidence in them. And these men declared that when we get rid of the British, we have to bring back to India our model of a state and a political system. That model is called by the name a Khilafa state. Why? Because of the Quran. Because in the Quran Allah says, Ba'da'uza billahi minash shaitanir rajim. He spoke to the angels and he said, Inni ja'ilun fil abdi khalifa. So he has the name Khilafa. <coughs> I'm going to place on earth one who will rule on earth, who will govern, who will establish law. Mm. Then again Allah spoke in the Quran and now he speaks to Dawood Islam. And he says, Ya Dawood, O David Islam, Inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil We are appointing you as Khalifa to one, one who will rule and govern on earth and establish law. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went on to explain how you must establish government and rule. What is the state that I want you to establish? He said, Fakum bain al nasi bil haq, bil haq, with al haq. <laughs> al haq doesn't come from Washington, al haq doesn't come from Britain, al haq doesn't come from Western. Modern Western civilization and Iqbal should have known that. Sometimes I have to raise my voice because of the pain inside of me. Such a learned and distinguished and ah what what great how great was he as a scholar. Well how come you didn't know that, Iqbal? He's my teacher and I respect him and I love him. But if you make a mistake, I have to say you made a mistake. Because regardless of consequences, Allah wants you to establish rule and governance and law on earth and a model of state that will establish rule on the basis of Al-Haq. And Al-Haq does not come from Cambridge University and Oxford University and Lincoln's Inn where Muhammad Ali Jinnah studied and Iqbal studied. Al-Haq comes from Allah. It comes in the Quran to us. 
And Nabi Dawood al-Islam is given this obligation to establish that state on the basis of al haq This is called a Khilafah state. You don't need any big books. No, this is a Khilafah state. A state which is established on the basis of al haq And al haq has come from Allah. And the Khilafat movement wanted that. <laughs> That's what they wanted. They wanted to remain faithful to their own indigenous political culture, their own indigenous model of a state. That's what they wanted. What belonged to their civilization, not what belonged to another civilization. Yes, the Khilafat movement made a mistake in recognizing the Ottoman Khilafah as a valid Khilafah. The Ottoman Khilafah was valid only in the shell, the outer shell. But inside, no, <laughs> it was a monarchy and it was an oppressor. Yeah. When Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi saw what the Muslims had done, and saw how the Khilafat movement spread like wildfire all over India. There's never been a movement that is as powerful in India as the Khilafat movement. Nobody knows it today. They don't study this anymore. Khilafat movement was a powerful movement in India. And it, it provoked respect from the Hindus. It spread like wildfire. And Gandhi then realized, but I want the same thing that they want. They want the British out, and they want to preserve their country and their civilization, their model of a state. And I want the British out, and I want to preserve for the Hindus exactly the same thing. <laughs> so Gandhi said, well, if I want what they want, we should come together. So Gandhi then approached Maulana Abdul Bari. Abdul Bari was the supreme alim of the Khilafat movement. Uh, Muhammad Ali Jawaharlal, well, these were younger people. And uh, said to him, I, I want to make an alliance with you. I have only one condition. So Maulana Abdul Bari asked, what is the condition? He said, I don't want you to kill the cow. He said, okay, we won't, we won't have killing of the cow. Problem solved. <laughs> And an alliance was formed. The only thing I would have done differently, I would have said to Gandhi, but you don't have to ask me to do that. As a sensible and intelligent Muslim, if I'm living in your land and you worship the cow and you are going to be very, very displeased and hurt if I kill the cow, out of respect for your religious feelings, I will voluntarily stop killing the cow. Five rupees worth of wisdom and intelligence, that's all. So you don't have to ask this as a condition. That's what I was told Gandhi. And so the alliance came into being. And the Hindu-Muslim alliance that took place, when Gandhi supported the Khilafah movement, then became the most dangerous threat to Western civilization that has ever occurred in its history. How many Pakistanis know that? How should the British respond to this, this very dangerous development in India? An alliance of Hindus and Muslims against the British? And when they, when they succeed in getting us out, the British out, they want to return to their political system. Whereas our agenda is that you must become copycats of the Western civilization. What the Western world had done was to say goodbye to Nabi Dawood and to the model of a state that is known as the Khilafah state. And with the French Revolution, Western civilization now bring, gave to the world exactly the opposite of the model of a state. They call it a Republican state. 
And in a Republican state, Allah is no longer sovereign. The state is now sovereign. Hmm? Allah's law is no longer the supreme law. No. The National Assembly makes the supreme law. The Parliament makes the supreme law. <laughs> I can go on much more on the subject. So this is this this is the reason why the British went into India in the first place. They didn't go to India just to rob us of our wealth. They went to India because India was the most important part of the whole world for them to colonize and to introduce that India into their model of a state and monetary system, etc. And then they could leave. So now the question is, what to do about the Khilafat movement? How can we get rid of this? How can we defeat this? Hmm? What it is was to create a champion in Mustafa Kamal. They did it. <laughs> And they had, to have, they had to suffer the loss. I don't know how many thousands of British soldiers had to lose their lives for Mustafa Kemal to become the hero of all heroes. But this history will never be written. Gallipoli will never be written. The Turks will never allow it. They worship Mustafa Kemal. And uh, use Mustafa Kemal and the young Turks who had already taken over government from the Ottoman Sultan in what year? See? You don't know your history. You, huh? Nineteen hundred and eight. Nineteen hundred and eight. They took over. It was called a coup d'etat. <laughs> Take over the government. Sultan Abdul Hamid had remained Sultan for something like 35 years and they took over from him and they shipped him out. And now these are godless young Turks, nationalists, ruling from Constantinople. Okay? And uh, then the First World War took place. And uh, during the First World War they were able to take Mustafa Kemal and make him a god. And then the Turkish Grand National Assembly was called upon to abolish the Khilafah. They didn't want to do it. They didn't want to do it. Because they were afraid of the consequences within Turkey. But Mustafa Kemal, the British, prevailed upon him. And he abolished the Khilafah. Uh, it was Abdul Majid, I think, who had taken over as Khalifa, and they abolished the Khilafah, <coughs> and they sent Abdul Majid to Switzerland or somewhere, <coughs> and they pulled the rug from underneath the Khilafat movement in India, because the Khilafat is gone. Good. But that was not enough. The Khilafat movement was comprised of men of great stature, great knowledge, great wisdom and great faith in their hearts. I can't say the same thing for the All India Muslim League, but I could say it for the Khilafat movement. Yes. You needed something more to demolish the Khilafat state. <coughs> and they used Muhammad Iqbal for that. That is the pain that is in my heart. Muhammad Iqbal will have to answer to Allah on Judgment Day. Had it not been for him, they would not have succeeded. They succeeded with him and they gave him the knighthood. He became <coughs> Sir Muhammad Iqbal. You don't become a knighthood for serving the mission of Islam. No. You get knighted when you serve Britain. <laughs> That's it when you get knighted. And he was knighted. It's painful for me to say this because I love Iqbal. <coughs> I have great respect for him. It's painful for me to say this. But what Iqbal did was to demolish the Khilafah model of a state, declaring that it cannot be restored and we must now accept the Republican model of a state. 
but he did more than that. He did what a scholar should never have done. He said that the Republican model of a state is an adequate substitute for the Khilafah state. The, the Republican model of a state is an adequate substitute for the Khilafah state. I hope everybody understands English mm -hmm. enough. That's dangerous. That is the greatest betrayal of all. Had it come from anybody else, the British would not have succeeded. But when it came from Iqbal, this, it prevailed. And so Pakistan was born on the dead body of the Khilafah movement. Had the Khilafah movement not been sacrificed, you would not have had a Pakistan. My heart is with the Khilafat movement. And I long for the day when the Khilafat state can be restored. So if your loyalty is to Pakistan, by all means you go with your Pakistan. Leave me alone. Because my loyalty is with the Khilafat state and with the Khilafat movement of Maulana Muhammad Ali Jawhar and Maulana Shaukat Ali. This is the man who should have been given the title of Qaid -e Azam. The Qaid -e Azam. Huh? Who will be the one who is struggling to restore the Khilafah. Not the one who has betrayed the Khilafah. Muhammad Ali, jo Muhammad, uh, uh, Ali Jinnah had less than a passing acquaintance with the Quran. He never pretended to be a scholar. Yeah, he never pretended to be a scholar. His scholar was Iqbal. He followed, the foot, he followed from the guidance of Iqbal and Muhammad Ali Jinnah never pretended to be what he's not. No. You could put, you could put a Dari and you could put a Pagri, whatever it is, Jinnah is still Jinnah. I'm not pretending to be anything. That is the, that is the greatness of Jinnah. Hmm? He never pretended to be an Alim. If this is what you want, I'll get it for you. And you have said goodbye to the Khilafat movement, don't blame me for that. You have said goodbye to the Khilafat movement. And you now want a Republican state, so okay, I'll give it to you. And he went ahead and he, <laughs> he gave you what you wanted. He gave you what you wanted after Iqbal had demolished the Khilafat movement. This is the sad story. I can't say this in Pakistan, they'll probably throw stones at me. See? They'll throw stones at me in Pakistan if I say this. Because you're not allowed to criticize Muhammad Ali Jinnah. And you're most certainly not allowed to criticize Iqbal. They'll bar me, they'll send me out of Pakistan. But I shared with you what I consider to be the truth. Okay, so whether Pakistan survives or does not survive is not a matter with Allah, <laughs> because with Allah, it is the Khilafah state that He asks. Ya Dawood, Inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ard, fakhum bayna nasi bil haq, wa la tattabi al hawa. Look at Pakistan from the day it was born to this day. Can that be the model of Islam? Yeah? Go into the market and you see a market with a den of thieves. Yeah? And the poor people are being oppressed. And the, 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 the rich barons driving their pajeros and so on are living it up. Yeah. And they have mansions in London. And mansions in Dubai. And mansions in Los Angeles. And Pakistan. This is nonsense. This can't be the religion of Islam. No. So... When the time comes, Allah will sweep all the garbage into the garbage bin. I have a question. Yeah. There's going to be alliance with the Orthodox Christians and the Muslims, but after the Great War, are the Orthodox Christians going to say because of the cross they won? Is that an authentic hadith or is that just a spanning yeah. 
I have to prepare a lecture on that hadith. Hmm? My method has been that I concentrate on the Quran, always the Quran. And when I have studied a subject from the Quran, and I'm satisfied that I have a, a, a sufficient grasp of it, only then do I turn to the hadith. And I look for a hadith which are in harmony with the Quran. And then I know I am on solid foundations. You can't challenge me, you can't shake me, not even with a bulldozer. You know it's a bulldozer? <laughs> but it, the, the implication is I have to move slowly. When I find a hadith which is in conflict with the Quran, I put it aside and I stay with the Quran. The problem is that sometimes a hadith, part of the hadith, will be in harmony with the Quran and part would be in conflict with the Quran, like this one. To try to offer an analysis of such a hadith it's a very ticklish thing. Good? And therefore I have to take my time. So I've never publicly lectured on this hadith, no? And I've been attacked left, right and center for I don't know how many years on this hadith, this hadith, this hadith. And all that I could do is to say to them, why don't you study methodology? Why don't you study methodology? That's all. I didn't say anything more. But it is clear to me, and I don't have the time tonight to be elaborate on it. There is a part of this hadith which is clearly in harmony with the Quran. And there is a part which is in conflict with the Quran. And if you take out that part which is in conflict with the Quran, then there is no problem left. Yeah. Can I have a question? Um, you, you, you said that Gog and Magog um, brought the Jews back to the Holy Land, um, or is it the Jad who, like, who's the mastermind behind it, to bring the Jews back to the Holy Land? And then you, you said that they're going to use dinar and dirham um, in Israel, but isn't it an imposter state which, which shows as if it's the, is this uh, uh, Holy Israel? You're asking two questions at once. Yes, I do. And the rules is one question at a time. Okay. So I'm 75 years of age. <laughs> right. so it's an, okay, so the second question. Okay. This Israel is an imposter state. It, will, it has been established on the basis of lies, a mountain of lies and brutal oppression and deception. And this Israel will eventually be destroyed when Nabi Isa Islam returns. Until then, however, it will remain. No matter what it does to dress it up, it will still be an imposter state. Even when it is using dinar and dirham as money, would it still not be an imposter state? Yes, that's the answer to your question. Even though it will be using dinar and dirham as, a, as money, it will still remain an imposter state. And the holy state of Israel will be restored only when Nabi Isa Islam returns. Okay? Uh, what was your first question? Um, the, the, uh, whether Yajuj, Majuj. Okay. Now then, if you'd done your homework, you'd have known <laughs> that Allah speaks in the Quran about a career. Which surah? Wa haramun, not the hafiz, not the hafiz, not the hafiz, you. Wa haramun ala qariyatin ahlaknaha annahum la yirdiyun. Which surah? Ambiya. Ambiya, are you guessing, eh? <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> Surah al -Anbiya. And Allah says, بَعَلَهُ سُبِ اللَّهِ مِنَّ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ 
وحرام على قرية أهلكناها أنهم لا يرجعون There's a town He does not identify the town But he destroys the town He expels the people of the town And places a ban They could never return To reclaim the town as their own Until Hatta when Gog and Magog are released and they are a people with power which cannot be destroyed other than by Allah so they spread out in all directions so they take control of the world so you have a word all of Gog and Magog then you will see Gog and Magog bringing these people back to that town the question is, which town is it? Okay? The Quran explains itself. <laughs> and uh, uh, I bought a book in Manchester on Jerusalem. I opened the book on a page, and there on the, sheet, on the page was evidence that I had missed. So, I was negligent. <laughs> yes, I was negligent. That Allah, uh, Allah speaks in two places of the Quran. One in Surah Al-Baqarah. Um, one in Surah Al-Baqarah, and the other in uh, I can't remember about a courier. The 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 traveler was passing by the town. He was lying in ruins. A courier, a traveler is passing by a town, he's lying in ruins and he says, I don't think this can ever be restored and Allah caused him to die for a hundred years. That is the first ayah. And here the word courier appears. And Ibn Kathir says the courier is Jerusalem. Yeah. And then there's another ayah where the word Qariya appears. And Ibn Kathir says the Qariya here is Jerusalem. It's in the Quran. And he's supported by other Mufassir. Good? So if Qariya twice in the Quran refers to Jerusalem, then there is the likelihood that Qariya here refers to Jerusalem. Yeah. I came to the conclusion that the Qariya is Jerusalem. And I am on solid foundations. Oh yes, I am on solid foundations. That Allah destroyed Jerusalem and expelled the Jews and placed a ban on them. They could never return to reclaim Jerusalem as their own. Kabhine, not for 2,000 years. Hatta, idha futti hat ya'juj wa ma'juj wa hum min kulli hadabin yansiloni. So when you see the Jews returning to reclaim Jerusalem as their own after 2,000 years. <coughs> you know, there is an explanation for it in the Quran. Allah says in the Quran that this book is Tibiyanan likulli shay. It explains all things. It therefore explains the return of the Jews to the Holy Land after 2,000 years. And here is the explanation. The Qariya is Jerusalem. So it's not Dajjal, it's Gog and Magog. But now there is something that is mysterious. Mysterious. In 1917, the Bolshevik Revolution took place. And Iqbal responded to the Bolshevik Revolution with a couplet, a share. Share is couplet? Yes, yes. Khul gaye ya'juj wa ma'juj ke lashkar tamam. They all have been released. This is bold language, eh? All have been released. Khul gaye ya'juj wa ma'juj ke lashkar tamam. And then look at how he ends. Chashmi Muslim de khle tafsir. Harfe, Yansirun, Wahum, 
كل حدب ينسلون وهم من كل حدب ينسلون چشم مسلم لقل تفسير حرف ينسلون وهم من كل حدب ينسلون اقبال هت the nail on the head on the head he recognized that Gog and Magog had been released and he said it in very bold language the problem is after that shear came out of him they sealed his mouth they shut him up and the mighty Iqbal could not speak one more word after that. That's it. <laughs> not one word until he died on Gog and Magog. After he declaring what was absolute truth. Okay. That's my answer to you and it's now 8 o'clock. <laughs> you want to do one more question? One more question. How, how do we protect ourselves from the tests of Jajal? How do we protect our sons from? Uh, no, the Jajal. He's uh, a test of choice. How do we pr protect our sons from Jajal? Ourselves. ourselves. How do we protect ourselves from? Dajjal. From Dajjal? What ways can we uh, protect ourselves? Any, or anything we can do? Number one, you constantly recite the dua. Allahumma inni a'uzu bika min azab al-qabr wa min azab al-nar wa a'uzu bika min fitnat al-mahya wal-mamat wa min fitnat al-masih al-dajjal This is a dua that is masnoon. When last have you heard this dua being recited by anyone? When last? Huh? You, you, you hear? Yeah. Oh, that's good, very good. I never hear Very rare, very rare, very rare to have it. And this dua you should be reciting in every salat. This dua. Constantly, constantly, constantly. You should be reciting this dua with tears in your heart and tears in your eyes because for dua, unless there are tears, it's not, it's not dua, you know. <laughs> Number two, the Prophet said, recite the first ten ayat of Surah Al Kaf for protection from the fitna of Dajjal. And uh, because Dajjal sees with the left eye, he's blind in the right eye, it looks like a bulging grave. I say, this is not Mukhkama, this is Mutasha Biha. This is therefore uh, something to be subjected to ta'wil, to be interpreted. And my interpretation is that the left eye symbolizes external sight and the blind right eye symbolizes internal blindness. But you don't have to accept my view, no. You don't have to accept my view. It's my view. And if you are internally blind, you have no nur. Noor is not sold in the supermarket. Noor is not sold in the stock market. Yahdillahu li noorihi man yasha. Allah grants noor to whomsoever Allah chooses. Okay. And if you do not have noor in your heart, for inna la ta'mal absar wa lakin ta'mal kulub allati fissudur. It's not these eyes which are blind. What is blind is the heart which is inside the chest. So you need nur to see. And he said, if you recite Surah al kaf on the day of Jumu'ah, you get nur. And the nur will remain with you until the next Jumu'ah. Yes. So you should be doing that. This is the beginning of the process. But then also you have to study. The child is a jasad. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّا سُلَيْمَانِ وَالْقَيْنَا عَلَى كُرْسِهِ جَسَدَ ثُمَّ أَنَابِ 
when Suleiman saw that Jasad on his throne in the vision, he understood that the Jasad wants to take over my state, Holy Israel. I don't want that because that Jasad is an evil being. So he made a dua. Qala Rabbik firli wahabli mulkan la yambagi li ahadim min ba'di. I don't want that Jasad to ever inherit my state of Israel. So I pray to you for a state which can belong to none after me. Wahabli mulkan la yambagi li ahadim min ba'di. This comes immediately after wa alqayna ala kursihi jasad. They are linked together. They are linked together. Wa alqayna ala kursihi jasad. Wahabli mulkan la yambagi li ahadim min ba'di. The two are linked together. It is because he saw that Jasad sitting on his throat, an evil being, he recognized it wants to take over, it wants to inherit my holy state of Israel. So he makes this dua that oh Allah grant me a state which none can inherit, none can belong to none after me. Okay. I came to the conclusion that the Jasad is Dajjal, but you don't have to you don't have to accept what I say. And there's no need for any boxing gloves. If you are uncomfortable with me, leave me alone. Yes, leave me alone. There are hundreds of thousands of scholars out there. Just leave me alone if you are uncomfortable with me. No need for any boxing gloves to box matches with me. No, no. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to make the effort to convince anyone that I'm correct. No. Not me. No. So I came to the conclusion, if I am wrong, and you point out and convince me I'm wrong, I pray to Allah to bless you, because I'll be a fool. Huh? I've made a mistake and someone correct me and I'm not willing to accept it. I would be a fool. <laughs> but if you cannot correct me, and you're saying I'm wrong, well then leave me, go somewhere else. This is not pride, this is not arrogance, no. And this is when Kidr said to Musa al-Islam, إِنَّكَ لَنْ تَسْتَتِيَ مَعِيَّ صَبْرًا وَكَيْفَ تَصْبِرُ عَلَى مَا لَمْ تُحِتْ بِهِ قُبْرًا So, you know that you are being attacked by the Jal when you see a jasad, an external shell with nothing inside. That is the money you're using now. Yeah. That's the money you're using now. And you've been using for a hundred years now. An external shell but for cargas, silk cargas, only paper. And nothing inside. And yes, they were ulama in India whose names should be written in gold, gold. There were ulama in India a hundred years ago who stood up and warned the people, this is Baharam, stay with your dinar and dirham. Today they have forgotten, we don't even know their names. But the establishment betrayed us, yes. The established scholars of Islam betrayed us a hundred years ago because they could not recognize a jasad, an external shell with nothing inside. Now even the shell is going <laughs> with the new money, which is electro electronic money and digital money and cryptocurrencies, and you're going to get fatwa coming tomorrow that this is also halal. So it's time for me to fall up and go, go, leave them, leave them, leave them, leave them, leave them, go. Let them remain with their bogus fatwas, yeah. You have to excuse me. You have to be, you have to be patient with me. Because remember your brother Imran has been talking for 20 years now. So if I have lost patience, if I get angry sometimes, if my language is harsh sometimes, be, 
forgive me because I'm really, really pain inside here. Okay, that is my answer to the judge.